I was never quite sure what the role of policemen in China were other than to keep an eye on people, to be a presence of government. In a city there was a fender bender in the main intersection snarling traffic. The drivers got out to squabble, but a group of policemen happened to be walking by and just kept going like nothing was happening. They not only didn't help, but they didn't even look again and kept walking and talking like, it's not my problem. In the U.S., a policeman, if caught doing that, would be not only reprimanded, but he may be let go. There wasn't a sense that police were part of a community helping each other. China's openness to solo travelers. There were a number of hotels where I was turned away, saying they would not accept U.S. or foreign passports. Some of them who wanted to take me in could not because they would get fined by the government. There seems to be a scam for certain party hotel owners under the guise of quality control. This may have some validity, but I saw a number of really fine hotels that couldn't take me and caused me to walk a whole lot more. Even China's biggest bank, Bank of China, often would not cash traveler's checks in many branches. In one city, I came close to being desperately low on cash. Horns seemed to be used more in China and hurt my ears more. I often wondered if horns had higher decibels. Homelessness in China In one city, a tired, hungry-looking family asked me for money to eat. I nodded in recognition but kept walking. Later, I would feel so guilty because I realized that was a habit of mine in New York City. There, I knew that people could find shelter and get a meal. And often, not always, the money was being used for substance abuse habit. But here in China, it was real. It was real hunger, and there were no soup kitchens that I knew of for them. That family before me was literally starving. It's a crueler world in many ways. I don't know how the mafias of Russia and China are faring exactly. I do know that a dear friend of mine, Ken, was murdered in a decade ago while trying to do business in Hong Kong. It still can be a wild world underground throughout the world. Another common enemy of us all. Non-interference. Non-interference has been a chief international policy and mantra for China for decades. In a global world, non-interference no longer holds well. Even if you thought you were just poisoning yourselves alone, you're not. And we care, I care, for those children in your land as much as children in my or any land. My biggest problem over the decades with China has been watching them hold up all conversation, blackmailing decisions, dominating international agendas by walking out of meetings and using this term non-interference in internal affairs. I understand some of this is a reaction from their history. But the oppression of the outsiders has been clearly outdone by the horrors of what people have done to their own. Too many unnecessary and preventable great horrors and human tragedies, genocides, have been allowed or indirectly supported by this attitude, by this policy, as opposed to the rhetoric behind non-interference. Human security requires some basics of internal and external international norms. One of the biggest hurdles for us is learning how to have our patriots, the soldiers, the veterans of some 190 countries on earth, know that we honor their sacrifice for their country, the lives of their parents, or children, or siblings, or friends, were not and are not in vain, that we respect and thank them for the fact that they believe what their leaders said about facing evil or gross unfairness, and that they wanted to protect us, the land, that they wanted our integrity. From that ground, let us begin to ease up on our overwhelming militarization and nationalisms, especially as we increasingly realize and envision our one small, vulnerable motherland, fatherland, called the Earth. Home is less and less simply China or the United States. Home for all humans is increasingly this planet in space. States and now corporations don't want you to hear or think this way yet. They still want to control the message. What will we make of this life? Competitive and divisive nations supporting ideologies of war? Or the sharing, learning, laws we can all respect 
respect itself. Hooray for all those of different nations who could admit when their own people or country were wrong. What strength of character. Children can be mean or great to one another. Dogs can be vicious or friendly. It all depends on how they were raised, on the parents or the owners. Let's start here. How does one learn to feel and say please or thank you? or I'm sorry. How does one learn to share, especially when you want something for yourself? How do we learn cooperation? How do we learn about people we don't know? How do we learn about what people we don't know are thinking and what their needs are? It's up to our example and our constant reinforcing and teaching. It's up to our vision and encouraging each other. Courage. China America, let's appreciate and enjoy the good we are. Let's work together, dialogue together, and respond to our positive visionaries.